How strong's a boat? <laughs> We're gonna find out. <laughs> we got a tiny piece of a boat here. <laughs> what are these called? Uh, soft loops or soft pad eyes. Soft loops, it's the stuff you can clip to on a boat. Instead of a metal bolted down on top. Ah, pretty cool stuff. We're gonna test this. We're gonna show you how this is actually made. And then we're going to pull on this sample and see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see what breaks. We'll see what breaks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryan Jenks, and this is... David Liebenberg. And he likes to sail a lot. <laughs> so we're doing a How Not to Sail, where we are breaking gear fear, and hopefully not creating some gear fear. And uh, we're gonna create an entire playlist for sailing-related stuff, this being one of them. So, you wanna guide us through what you use these for? Yeah, so these are three different loops, one, two, and three. These two that go through, this is the deck of a boat, essentially are higher load and then this little guy is sort of just an attachment so you can glue it on to the side of a composite structure fiberglass or carbon fiber uh, without having to drill a hole and attach something to it so cool so, i don't know how strong this is i want to find out so that's just glued on. that's just glued on gotcha. with epoxy you're just hanging your hat on that yeah um what do you put in here? You put metal or the circle things? Yeah, the pole? yeah. Sometimes a, a friction loop or a ferrule will okay. go in here, and then another rope can run through the metal that's in here to reduce friction and chafe. Or you could attach a block to it, like a pulley. Gotcha. Um, and have the rope, a separate rope, run through the pulley. So chafing is rope on rope abrasion. Yep. What we call in climbing nylon saws, and a block is what you call pulleys. Correct. Why don't you just call them pulleys? Because the blocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got um, circles under here. Yeah. Uh, so we can pull that out. We'll pull that out. How's that made? Yeah, so there's a few pieces. The rope portion is two pieces of Dyneema. So it's this Dyneema chafe cover, which is the outer bit that you see here. And inside of it, there is more Dyneema. The Dyneema inside is load bearing. And the Dyneema on the outside is for the chafe or um, just re reducing wear over over time. And why does the outside not see like tension as well? Because if that's seeing tension, isn't that the same? Yeah, it has to do with the, the angle of the weave on the outside and it's a little bit soft. So I'm oh. go going over this Dyneema here. So it's not 12 braided. It's not 12 braided. Oh. It's braided with a tube that's round so stuff can run through it and it just sits over the outside. So it's like a finger trap on the outside. So if you squish it in, then when you pull it out again, it's not seeing any force. Exactly. The weave doesn't see so force. So I can pull and that can still slide oh. over it. Gotcha. And then you loosely secure the two ends gotcha. and it gets held in place. Yeah, I guess that's better than using a thicker Dyneema? Than the 12 strand Dyneema, correct. Yeah, okay. It, it, you it's, still gotta protect it. It's You have to protect you it. You have to protect it. But the, the weave is smaller, so it's better at chafe. When ropes are under tension, they can cut through a lot easier. It's good to know when you're climbing and highlining. Always <laughs> pad your highlines, by the way. Um, so this is not a knot embedded in this wafer. Correct. So it is effectively, you have, we have this construction, and then the two ends of it are, it's going to take a second, but splayed out. So it's like that. It's, it's like that, gets okay. splayed out, and there's two pieces of fiberglass plate with epoxy in the middle and it gets sandwiched together and the epoxy glues the loose ends of the Dyneema together and binds it to the two sides of the plate. That's pretty rad. How long has this been in production? Since Dyneema came around? Uh, Ten that's years? a good question. 10, 10 or 15 years maybe? How long has sailing been around? <laughs> 12,000 12, 12, 12, years? Yeah. <laughs> so relatively new actually. So then you you drill a hole in your, your boat. Is a, that A single hole. Because that sounds cheap. <laughs> is it supposed to be this difficult? It's you don't want to dri <laughs> drill a bigger hole than you need. You didn't. <laughs> it's going to go eventually. <laughs> Sometimes we need another thing to pull it through. And then you'd put some sort of silicone or sealant to keep the water from going into the boat as well when mm. you finally install it. Nailed it. So we're going to attach this to our brake test machine. And these are just going to be slow pulls. There's all sorts of loads that you see on a sailboat, like a lot of, a lot of this. Yeah, so some shock loading sometimes, yeah. and um, and then you got a tiny one. Yep. And then a glued-on little little one. little little one. 
I have no idea how we're even going to get this in the Slack snap machine. Figure let's, that out. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> All right. Oh, the Dyneema broke. Oh, it didn't. What do you think was going to happen? Or it, it might have pulled out. I was expecting the top fiberglass sheet to splinter a little bit. Well, it kind of broke it at the bottom at here. The, yeah, but the Dyneema broke at the bottom. Fiberglass is intact. Fiberglass and epoxy for the win. Let's try the bigger one. Okay, we're set up for what we believe is two millimeter. Yeah, two two mil inside the Dyneema chafe. Inside the chafe, yep. And yeah. how strong do you think this is going to be? 1,500 pounds. All right, so about six kilonewtons here. Yeah. You were wrong. Wow. So you're saying well, this doesn't need to be stronger because the boat isn't. The, what this is attached <laughs> to often needs to get reinforced anyways. Yeah, otherwise you pull a hole through your boat. Oh, well, now we can see if this is actually too much. <laughs> I am so impressed. 14 kilonewtons. Like that's... You could high line on that. Not so that's a th that's three mil. That's not two mil. Mm. Okay, good to know. And you can see the loose. Yeah, yep. Loose cover, and it's why does it look like that? Is it just because it's black, or because it, we heated it up? It, it, no, it, it is black Dyneema. Oh, okay. Um, and Interesting. The Dyneema cover actually broke. Here's a little bit of the Dyneema cover, and then the core was back down in there, and it sort of seems like it broke right at the edge of the epoxy. These guys feel like they have a little epoxy on them. So you're saying I shouldn't stand next to the big, bigger test? Uh, I think that's probably wise. It looks like it broke in the same way. Here, you want to pull that out. Yeah. That's the chafe cover that's still in place. And the core, same as last time, pulled out from the inside. Wow. All right, uh, let's measure the diameter to just double, double yep. check. Four mil. Four mil. Okay, and the other one was three? Slightly smaller than the soft shackles from our previous episode. Our previous episodes? Oh, we broke some soft shackles for you. <laughs> check that out here as a bonus brake test. That's not related to this, but we have no idea where else to put this into a video. <laughs> is, uh, what, what is this? It's a... It's a snap shackle. It's okay. High load snap shackle. So I have a small one that I used on uh, shock loading as a myth, and I pulled myself and released myself. But this is a bigger one. How strong is this one? Uh, Twelve thousand pounds. Yeah, that's more than I've ever. Yeah. <laughs> I have a tiny one. Are we gonna break it, or are we gonna see if it, we can actually release the load under five thousand pounds? Yeah, let's try. So it's designed to be able to be released easy, relatively easily under a high load. Okay. Um, so I'd love to see what that looks like, and then pull it and see if we can pop it. Okay, what's the mechanism of it? So there's a lever arm here, and it catches right there. So that's holding so, everything. Yeah, so that's holding everything. So it's open, snaps closed, it's getting pulled here, you pull the lever arm. And it opens and up. And it opens up. And you were worried about this one because there's wear and tear right here? There's... so the, this actually uh, just sailed to Hawaii, and it you can sort of see some chafe right there. There was a metal ring that it went um, went through. How many times was this used? Was it just the one trip, or is this... It was used before, but then it was up under many thousands of pounds of load for multiple days on end, with it constantly moving and settling. Every wave you hit, everything, the load changes a little bit. And what are you trying to snap shackle out there? Uh, it's called the spinnaker. It's like a big round sail in front of the boat that's most of the time colorful. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them that sort of triangulate. And when you change which spinnaker you have up, you need to be able to release that sail very quickly. So you go out and y'all spike and you put a metal wedge in it and it can pop like that or... And you're standing next to that while you pop it? Doesn't that shit go flying? Well, some of the time you shimmy out over the water on the end of like a 15-foot pole yeah. over the water yeah. and you're holding yourself out there and then you spike it. Oh, so it makes it even safer? Oh, yeah. So in this test, since we don't want to stand next to this, we're using this little string. Yeah, and you can have it sort of on a remote release as well. Wait, this isn't a little string. This is our leftovers from our soft shackle brake test video <laughs> found right here. 
it trips the... Uh, okay, so we're pulling from a distance. Yeah. We'll pull up to, what's 5,000 pounds? 25 kilonewtons? Ish, yep. All right, let's put it to 25 and then release it? That just sounds really dangerous. It sounds like something I would like to do. <laughs> we're like working with a grenade here. So, whoa, don't pull it. <laughs> so that looks right. There's about 5,000 pounds of force on this right now. Do you think there's friction in it? Possibly, and it, it does What about this? Friction. What if you just like slowly pull it, but yeah, have your foot behind you? <sighs> 220 pounds. Well, I'm impressed how strong you are, but that's not working. No. That's... So that guy, when it's like that. Uh, huh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's what I was just thinking. Like, this was supposed to be a quick bonus test, <laughs> and now it's turning into a whole second half of an episode. Yeah. Uh, now what? Should I take it up to 15 kilonewtons to see if it's working? Yeah. Some of the time when we have it on a hair trigger, yeah. you're bowstringing. Tied off, and then we can just grab this and, and pull sideways. Yeah. Is how that, that does function okay. in the field. There's one. Open that up. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna keep testing Let's this. Go. Under right, under good. ten, I feel like we're pretty good. We're at three. Go for three. Okay, that's almost two thousand pounds. Wait for it and action. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't too hard, was it? No, I think the. Uh... You think that extra force does it? Yeah, I think that does quite a bit. Let's take it up to 12 and see if you can do it from back there because that's yeah. apples for apples. We're at 12 kilonewtons. Go for it. Wow, you had to really work for that. 115. That was at 12.25 when he released it. Do you want to try a bowstring? Let's try a bowstring. Okay, so we have five kilonewtons under here. This is the trigger attached to the end there, and he's going to pull this string back to give, you know, some distance. advantage. <laughs> and, and, and some distance. distance. <laughs> yeah, so um, this tied off. It should be safe enough. 16, 22. <laughs> what on earth happened? I broke my uh, trip line that's right here. <laughs> okay, so when it's a 26 kill in it, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not doing it not without doing it. some weird thing. Mechanic, uh, metal spike. Metal spike would do it. But then you have to be... Right next I was to gonna it. say we wouldn't do it here. Why would you do it on a boat? <laughs> Has so, to get done sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> makes me want to go sailing. Yeah. So like, why do they make it this strong if it's gonna be that sketchy to undo it? So you have a safety factor because it's a T12 breaking strength, not a working load. Ah, what is the working load? It doesn't say. Oh. So we're loading to half. We're at what might be a max working load if you have a safety factor. Like super max two. working load, yeah. <laughs> safety factor two is not a lot. No. Um, should we just pull it till it break breaks? Let's do it. Something ended up behind us over I there. I think something hit this. I mean, sometimes it's the machine bumping it, but holy crap. Oh, the mechanism. Whoa. Oh. So the trigger didn't break. Here's the trigger. Yeah. That's the release. Okay. And it broke where it was worn at the uh, at the pivot point. It definitely should be replaced because it broke only at 41 kilonewtons. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that's not on a boat anymore. <laughs> what's the math on 41 kilonewtons? What's it rated to? 12,000 pounds. We just broke it at 9,200 pounds. Science. Good thing it came off the boat. So what'd you say earlier that I thought was a really good comment? I'm learning that things don't have as much load as I think. That's really the premise of how not to. Super good enough is <laughs> kind of the conclusion, even though this did break lower than the MBS. It's also worn out. But at the end of the day, it's like you can't even release the thing yeah. at 5,000 pounds. So you're never going to use this thing over two or 3,000 pounds. I don't know. That was a sketchy, that sounded <laughs> sketchy. Forgot this was the original brake test we started with. It's been a while since we started. So this was what? Four mil Dyneema yeah. uh, soft pad eye. Three mil Dyneema soft pad eye. And what'd you just say about them? <laughs> They're both way stronger than I thought they were. This is probably stronger than what I attach it to on the boat most of the time. It's a good point. It's not just strength though. It's abrasion or chafing. It's 
a lot of different factors. Uh, we try to think of things holistically here on the channel, and so if we zoom in on things like this, we're going to focus on just the strength of this, but it's not just the strength of that. Yeah, we've got a playlist for everything. Playlists are how we organize things, and I won't tell you to subscribe or hit that like button because that's annoying if you're binge watching these videos. See you in the next video.